G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I'm plodding on with this uh, um, makeover on this Chinese flame liquor engine I got off of uh, the internet from Banggood. And the one problem is the run out of the flywheel. Now, I've stripped it down, done some measurements. The problem is that they've machined the hole in the centre too big. If we uh, put the pin in, you can see there's slop in there. This pin's also not totally uniform either. But yeah, see, so they've actually machined a, a cone-shaped centre in it. This side's tight and that side's loose. So, the original thought was to machine it out, bush it, and lock tight in a, a sleeve, then re rebore it. But when I was thinking about it, now, they had the shaft in the flywheel, then they had these little shims to space it out between the two, the two bearing supports. What I've decided to do is actually machine this out uniform and then make up a new um, a new flywheel pin and a little bit of lateral thinking and we'll make a stepped flywheel pin so we'll retain the same in diameter but we'll increase the centre section same as they do on Ducati motorbike crankshafts and other motorbike crankshafts as well the old stuff you have a step crank pin so that's basically what I'll machine up so done a few measurements and by doing it that way you see you can have the bigger centre journal for the flywheel and you can also extend it out to touch the sides of the bearing races so that way you can eliminate most of your shims if not all of them if you get it dead right so that's all just less chance of friction and uh, yeah that's the plan so I'll get on with it before I machine that centre I'm going to uh, see if I can take those marks off the outside of this flywheel so I've got it marked mounted in a collet on the centre boss in the old Shorblin and we'll see also see how much concentricity there is, how much run out there is um, you know, I don't know basically how this thing's been machined so this will be a pretty good test so we'll get the old old uh, Shorblin going This is where it's handy, having two layers, you know, and have one set up with collets, you can just easily uh, put stuff on. Although when I do the machining, I might use the Chinese because I can drop power feed and it does make it easier. So, let's see what happens when I spin it up. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, radi radially it's pretty good. Okay, well I'll just skim this. Yeah. That's pretty pretty acceptable really. So it's just the centre that's no good. So I'll just dress that and uh, take that mark off. Hmm, what will I use on that? I should really use a shear tool on that. Though I haven't got a shear tool that fits the Shorblin, so I've really... Hmm. Right, what should we do? What should we do? This is a classic example of where a set of collets is basically worth its weight in gold. It can do these jobs very easily because without collets you wouldn't be able to grip this without marking it in a normal three or four jaw chuck. So when you wanted to machine the outside diameter of this, re re reface it because it needs doing because of that mark on it, you would have to 
grip it in the centre somehow, now, you know, Chuck is almost certainly going to mark that little, that little edge. Collet will just drop on and grip that without marking it. You'll then be able to machine out the centre and do the outside dressing without moving the, uh, the workpiece. The collet will grip that perfectly. Okay, we've got the flywheel mounted in the collet. Now this is a situation where you can't use your multi-point wrench on the collet because you can't get it off past the job. So you have to use a single point. So the old single points are still handy for certain sorts of situations. We'll check it for run out. It's pretty good. They've done a good, yeah, they've done a good job on it. All they've done is stuff up the centre. So yeah, so I'll dress the outside with a shear tool and then I'll run the boring bar through it. I'll t just take out the minimum amount and then it's just a matter of make up a new crank pin. Dress that with a bit of wet and dry if I can find my wet and dry. Just uh, go over it with a bit of wet and dry. Perfecto. Toilet paper, handy stuff. Alright, well this is the only boring bar I've got that will fit. Normally I would text to the inside so I can see that I've got it all, but in this case I can't get in there so I'll just go through a few times. So it looks right. It's got a lot of overhang, but can't be helped.
We're on our final speed, which is 0 0.05 mil. That's pretty good. Yeah, slightly more, but that's quite okay. Done. Well, I'll grab screws back in. The centre turned out good, 7.05 mil. That's excellent. And uh, yeah, that should all be good and true. So now I've just got to make up a little crank pin with a 7mm centre and 6mm ends. We're good to go. So uh, I'll use the collet uh, chuck the uh, 32 collet chuck in the lathe for that as well because once again when you're working on jobs like this there's nothing better than a uh, collet chuck or a collet chuck to grip this really small stuff and uh, not mark it and be dead accurate you know all right well that's it from me so we're getting there part two done see you in the next part cheers